Welcome to this walkthrough of our app Cash Basis Accounting. Our app will calculate and report your financials using Cash Basis Accounting principles. Preparing Cash Basis statements can be very time consuming when you have when you like to calculate cash basis for your GL accounts. Payment applications, refunds and credits can make this task even harder. Our app allows you to calculate cash basis with one click. No more long hours preparing cash statements. Cash basis is simply just a part of Dynamics 365 Business Center, and it will help you free up some of your time. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Here we are in the chart of accounts, and you'll notice a few new fields. There's a net change cash and a balance of date cash, and we have a normal net change and balance, and if we drill down on the normal ones, you'll notice that we are just looking at general ledger entries. But if I'm drilling down on the cash one, we are in the cash basis ledger entries. So it's the different tables, completely different from general ledger. So the cash basis accounting is reported out of the cash ledger, and the cool basis accounting is calculated out of the general ledger, uh, just like you've been used to. Notice that the amounts are different because the net change cash is calculated a different way. And we'll get back to all that. And we also see here there's an advertising expense here uh, for $1,000 that has a net change of cash. And actually, we can take a look at these. It's one entry here for an invoice. So an invoice was posted for $1,000. And here is the same invoice. $300 were recognized probably because there was a payment of $300 uh, towards this invoice. If we go back to the chart of accounts, you'll notice here we have a couple of new actions. One is calculate cash, and one's called cash adjustment journal. We'll get back to the adjustments in a little bit, but uh, the calculate cash is uh, a job that you can run manually, or you can set it up to run automatically in the job queue. So here I'm just running it manually. I can pick here the dimensions uh, if I want to close uh, them when you're closing over several uh, cash years. Uh, we need to, to select the dimensions we like to close. We'll, we'll also get back to that. So if I click OK, it's going to Go through the accounts receivables, going to go through accounts payables, going to go, th go through the general ledger and some other cost adjustments, uh, cash adjustments, and then uh, the cash is calculated. So that's important to notice that the cash is not automatically calculated every time you post an entry. It is calculated manually if you run it, for instance, from here, but you'll find it other places also, or you can have it run. Uh, automatically uh, in the job queue overnight or something like that. So let's take a look at how Cash Basis is handling posting of documents and payments. Cash Basis works in that way that it will find payments, credits, and refunds made to customers and vendors and find the corresponding documents that were applied to or from the payments or the refund. Whenever we find a document, it will then calculate the percentage of the applied amount, calculate the cash basis of, for each line of the document. So in this case here, I have a posted sales invoice and has been posted and it has created accrual entries for sales uh, $500 on this account and $1,000 on this account. So if we go to the chart of accounts, Here. and we find these accounts here we see that 500 was uh, posted here on job sales applied and a thousand here and nothing in the cash ledger if, even if I try and calculate the cash here you'll notice that nothing came up because we have not received any payment. So I'm going to receive a payment now. So we go to the cash ledger, cash receipt. OK, 
cash receipt journal and this is a payment for this customer let's apply it to here this is the invoice and so I'm gonna short paid 750 instead of 1500 and we'll post it and so we posted a $750 payment to a $1,500 invoice. And nothing has happened here yet. We still need to calculate the cash. And so I'll run this. And you'll notice that it actually recognized that half of it was paid and it split the payment equally over the two um, accounts. So the 500 that you see here is from the accrual and the 250 here is from cash. So we could go back and forth and with, if I unapplied the 250 and the 500, or if I unapplied the 750, these accounts will, will go back to zero because the, it was never applied to the invoice. So it didn't know where to to post these uh, cash ledger entries to. So that's the point I'm trying to make here is whenever it finds an, a payment applied to this particular invoice, it will try and say, okay, so there was a payment made of $750. And so that was half. So it would go through each of these lines. And in this case, it's these are DL account lines. But if they have been item lines or resource lines, they would have corresponding sales deal accounts, and then they would just go and use those accounts. But we made it a little simpler here by just using deal accounts directly. And since it was paid 50%, it would just post 250 to this account here and 500 uh, to this account. So in order to close this invoice out, I could uh, do a payment of $750. So let's go to a cash receipt. And I have one here, I'm ready to go. And so if I posted this cash and accrual would be the same, but let's try and do an overpayment to see what happens then. So we'll post this. And let's go to the chart of account. Just before we go to the chart of account, I want to show you where we can calculate the cash from anywhere just by searching for it. And so I can write it here. And you've seen me run this a few times now and say, well, this is the way you actually have to do it, or you just have it to have it automatically done with the job queue. That way you can have it updated once a day and the cash base is going to be correct uh, at the beginning or at the end of every day. So we ran it here and now we can go to the chart of account. Actually, there. So I go to the chart account and let's take a look at, you see these now, everything is the same for these accounts. We overpaid uh, $250, so they must be somewhere. And they are actually here, cash overpayments. So the cash overpayment account is an account that has been set up to handle um, overpayments of cash. So if I go and check here, I can see that this is the entry, there's an overpayment, and it's just going to sit there until it eventually gets applied to another invoice or it gets refunded. At that time, it will then move out of this account. When it comes to purchase documents, they work the exact same way as sales documents work uh, when calculating cash basis. So let's take a look at how we can post general journals and have them affect the cash ledger or not. So when I pick uh, general journals here, we have a new field here that's called excluding cash. 
and this means that in this particular journal it will default to that it is not being uh, creating cache ledger entries for the GL entries. Typically a, a, a general ledger entry will go straight to uh, the cache ledger because no accrual is happening but you may want to exclude certain uh, entries uh, in the general ledger and not have them go to the cache ledger and that's why we have this excluding cache. So if we go to this journal everything we post here will not become entries in the cache ledger and you can actually find the field here excluding cache and you could click on this and even though the batch defaulted it in it's now not um, applicable here so I'll just turn it back here so when we post here and have uh, excluding cache on then we will not have any cache ledger entries from these general ledger entries if we didn't have this cache excluding cache turned on like from any of the other ones every single entry we make in these journals will also be cache in the cache journal you may come across examples where you would uh, like to make adjustments to the cache ledger without making any adjustments to the general ledger and so we allow that there's a cache adjustment and we have a journal we have ledger entries and we have batches so if i go to the, the ledger entries those are entries that will be posted into the cache ledger without any regards for anything else so these five entries will always be entered currently into the cache ledger. These entries are made from a cache basis adjustment journal and we saw that so adjust journal batches let's see yep and so we can specify the GL account posting date document you know, the dimensions and then you can uh, post the journal they will become uh, adjustment journal entries and they will be automatically inserted by the calculate cache function every single time it's run and it will insert it into the cache ledger entry by entry you can use financial reports that are standard in business central they were also called account schedules a few versions back. They can be used to report out of the cash ledger also. So these are standard business central financial reports that you can use and you probably use them already. And the only thing you need to do is in the column definition, you can go in and say if you want to pull it from the cash ledger or the general ledger. So as long as these are not checked, this uh, column called cash basis, you will report out of the general ledger. But as soon as you have them checked, every time you use these uh, uh, column definitions, it will pull the data out of the cash ledger. It's that simple. There are also a couple of canned reports for trial balance. And we'll show all of them here. So we have some cash business trial balance, detailed summary, just like the usual general ledger ones, we created ones for cash basis also. We also have an export where you can export the cash basis ledger into a comma separated file that you can then import into Excel. The advantage of doing that is that we actually export up to 12 dimensions also and that would be great to load that into Excel and do some advanced reports based on your cash ledger. It's possible to have a cash year that is different from the fiscal year of your accrual accounting system. So here we can create new cash years, close them, just like you do it with the regular 
accrual accounting, you can do the exact same with the cash accounting and even with a different start of the year. So let's take a look at the cash basis setup. There are a couple of things that the system needs to know in order to calculate cash. First one is the retained earnings account. We need to cash basis needs to know it so that we can close income statements, etc. The overpayment amount uh, uh, account we looked at that before. It needs to know where to post any unapplied entries of overpayments. So that would go into this account. Then we have an ignore before date. Ignore before date means that cash basis is going to ignore all customer and vendor ledger entries before a particular date. And why would you do that? Well, if you have a lot of entries and many years of accrual accounting, it can take a long time to calculate cash. And once you calculated it, maybe you don't want to calculate it before a certain date. And so you can put that date in here. You can also put in do not delete before date, means meaning that you're not deleting the cash entries that you already calculated before a certain date. And that would be this ignore, ignore before date. Allow document posting in journals uh, is an advanced function that is usually only used when the system is being set up and is used by your partner or Simcrist. Finally, we have the licensing information where you can go in and activate your subscription. Basically, just go here, report this name to us, and then we will give you an activation code. You click here, activate subscription, and you have a subscription to Cash Basis.